What's up boys and girls of the internet? Your boy Shadowhunter here is back with another Force of Seven video. Today we're going to be talking about tips for tandeming. So here are five tips to improve your tandem. So, uh, tip number one, let's get into this. Uh, watch your lead car and learn its signs. Um, after following somebody for a few laps, uh, you can kind of see and pay attention to what their car is going to do. So key areas to look for are the front wheels. Um, watch the front wheels, they'll kind of show you when the car is going to angle up and get ready for a transition or if the dude's struggling and making a lot of corrections, you can kind of see that maybe he's not in full control and you need to give him a little bit more space. So the unfortunate part about watching the wheels in Forza when you're online, um, half the people are probably going to be on a controller, um, well, more than half. So pretty much everybody you run into is more than likely going to be on a controller and the controller users front wheels kind of flop around a lot um, whereas a wheel users wheels are very very uh, smooth and predictable I guess you could call it so when you're following somebody with uh, a controller you got to be careful because if you watch the front wheels they're going to be flopping around and you might get confused so watch their door what meets the fender area kind of where that little line is um, you'll be able to see the car's body roll and you'll be able to see the car's nose transition because usually that's like right in front of the pivot point so when the car goes for a transition that little gap or the door fender area will either move farther away from here or near you so pay attention to that um, that will help you read the person and follow their line um, like I said pay attention to the front car pay attention to their line and also be careful and give them enough room to move around Tip number two is probably arguably the most important tip that I have for you guys, and that is to learn, understand, and master left foot braking. Uh, using left foot braking to smooth out your driving when leading, or more importantly, when following, um, it allows you to slow down while maintaining staying on the gas, so you can kind of grab that front brake to take away some of your momentum, but still stay on throttle, so that way you don't lose too much speed. Um, it allows you to really, really adjust yourself because in a situation where you're coming up onto somebody and you tap the left foot brake or you know your front brakes a little bit and you slow down just just a bit to match their angle or match their speed. Um, whereas if you try to do that with the say the e brake, um, you're pushing the clutch, you grab the e brake. Now the back wheels have officially stopped spinning. Um, now, in order to catch back up, you have to drop the clutch and really get back on the gas. And now you're playing catch up because you took all your forward momentum out of it. So, the best thing to do is to actually work with your left foot, or not really your left foot, but whatever controls the car's actual brakes, which I'm just going to call left foot braking. Um, that's what we're calling you're actually driving. <laughs> so, use a little bit of left foot braking while you're tandeming so that way you can slow down and match angles and speed a whole lot better and stay more consistent on the person in front of you. And it's probably, like I said earlier, the most important tool for tandeming well. Another tip that I got for you, so tip number three, is to kind of stick with the main car. Um, you'll notice that a lot of the clips in this video, well actually pretty much this entire video, is me using my 2017 Nissan GTR. Uh, I actually built that in the Catal right before the Catalonia School Lobby that I'm that, um, that's going to make up the majority of this uh, video for the footage. Um, I built this car right before then and I did about 50 laps on Catalonia School and I did about a hundred laps on Maple Valley Short reverse, uh, little, or actually no, it wasn't reverse, but Maple Valley Short. So, and then there's various other uh, um, tidbits that I did with other cars, but I did mainly 150 laps with the Nissan GTR, so I was very, very familiar with it, and that was my car to use by the end of the day. Um, the earlier clips on Maple were from my last few runs of the day, so those were back towards when I actually had some really good control over the car. Um, so that's my tip for you is to pick a car that you're really, really comfortable with that you really like and just run laps with that thing and try to grab doors. Uh, I wouldn't recommend switching all the time because cars can handle different and react different no matter how similar their tunes are. So pick a car that you really, really like and maybe stick with that for the week while you do some practicing. Uh, tip number four is my tip for best way to get experience. Um, the best way, for my, in my opinion, to get experience is to jump in an open meetup drift lobby. 
uh, do that and try to and you know kind of look for a uh, um, look for a small track. Look for my preferences, Catalonia School as being my number one drift track to, uh, to tandem with. Um, number two would be Maple Valley, preferably reverse, um, short, but I also like regular direction, so as long as it's a short one. Um, and number three would be like Suzuki East. Uh, those are three good tracks to tandem people on because when you get in a full lobby, like you know a 20 person plus lobby, um, you'll, you're pretty much bound to always have somebody within 30 seconds of you. So if the person that you were previously following doesn't like you and he stops, just wait a couple seconds and somebody else will come along. Uh, I don't like trying to learn to tandem on bigger tracks like Maple Full because even though there's 20 people in the lobby, uh, after about two minutes, pretty much everybody's spread out and you'll be waiting pretty much a full lap at, at every now and then for watch or trying to get more people to tandem. So that's why I prefer the small tracks because there's always people available. Tip number five would be to for, well I guess this would probably be the most important right next to um, left foot braking and that would be to absolutely forget about your score, forget about your points, and forget about rubbing and bumping in contact. Just don't worry about it. That is just bound to happen and that's something that you're gonna have to just accept. So, learn it, understand, not learn it, but um, understand that bump, rubs, contact, and dropping points are all part of very, very close, very, very awesome tandems. So, just let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Okay, I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, when you get started to learn to tandem, avoid hitting your leader pretty much at all costs um, until you build up trust with them. Uh, if you follow somebody and get on their doors a lot of the times, especially if they're a complete random, which is what most of the people I follow are, um, they kind of get a little nervous and get freaked out as you drive up on their door. So pretty much avoid hitting them at all costs while you build up that repertoire with them. Um, after a few laps of being on their door and not hitting them, they'll learn to trust you and then you can really get on their door and, and then if you bump them once or twice, it's really not going to be a big deal. Um, the other thing is that when you first start tandeming, you don't really understand how hard you can hit somebody or bump somebody without really affecting them. So until you learn that, again, just avoid contact as much as possible until you start to really get the feel for how hard you can hit somebody without messing up their line. Um, if the lead car spins out and you aren't drifting with friends, check who else, who's all behind you. Um, a lot of the times you can kind of get in the zone just following somebody and paying attention to their car. Uh, I literally, pretty much the only thing I watch when I'm following is the person in front of me. That's I'm pretty much just focused just dead on their car. And obviously I'll take a look around and see who's behind me and stuff every now and then, but my main focus is on who's in front of me. So when they spin out, just double check behind you because some of the most annoying things is that when you're getting a, a nice little train going is that the leader will spin out and then uh, second place won't really pay attention to who's behind him and he'll just stop and they'll mess the whole train up. So if you're following somebody and you guys got a train going on behind you just nice etiquette be polite and just keep running finish out the lap and then wait for the person that spun out or unless everybody stops because you guys are all friends and know each other then that's okay too but if it's random just finish out your lap if you got people behind you because you don't really want to mess up the whole train because they're just trying to learn it or they're trying to hand them just like you are um as you start getting closer to the lead car the best thing you can do is just commit to their line um, forget about your line. Don't worry about anything else. Just follow their line. Um, that's the best thing I got for you. Be committed. Just stick to them. Um, like I said, unless they spin out, then um, follow you or run your own line while you leave the rest of the pack for the rest of the lap. But uh, when you're fo or when you're following somebody, um, the best thing to do is just commit to their line. Uh, and then kind of it goes uh, that kind of touches back to leading once the lead car spins out if you're really committed to their line you'll probably make whatever mistakes they do so if you don't really want to lead um, this gives you a solid excuse to not lead the rest of the train if there's people behind you because they'll be spinning out with the lead car that's pretty much what I got for you for this video um, 
I don't know how much longer I'm gonna let the. Uh, I'll probably let this clip run out for a little bit longer, so you guys can get some entertainment. Because me and this guy, again, complete random, had some fantastic tandems. Um, I think we ran for 20 laps door to door at that one point, and then something happened. He lagged out. I lagged out. I don't remember it while I'm recording the voice for this. But he did his thing, I did my thing, and then a little bit later he showed back up and I still got more footage from this this lobby where we ended up going for another 20 laps or something like that door to door as he changed cars. So again, let's recap best things that you guys can do. Um, tip number one, watch the lead car, learn its signs, um, and understand its line. Uh, most important left foot braking learn master and adapt to left foot braking this will really really help smooth you out and allow you to stay right on top of somebody um, stick with the same car for tip number three like I said I pretty much used my Nissan GTR uh, 2017 for this entire video uh, so that's gonna be my tip for you is pick a car to stick with for a week and let, use that uh, number four uh, the best way to get experience is to go on open meetup drift copy, uh, drift copy, drift lobby hopper, and then just follow random. Um, again, look for small, tight tracks that way you don't really have to worry about people spreading out too much. And that's the best thing you can do for that. And then, last but not least, absolutely forget about points score and do not get upset if somebody bumps you because it's just bound to happen when you're an inch from somebody's door. Uh, those are my five tips and plus a little couple extra explanation tidbits um, on how to improve your tandeming. So get out there, have some fun, practice, and good luck guys. I just want to thank everybody for watching this video. Um, please leave me a comment if there's any suggestions that you want to see for uh, another future video or if there's anything that you've learned from this video. Uh, I'd, be love I'd love to hear about it. Uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.